What's up guys, welcome back to another For Those Who Code video. In this video, we are taking a look into writing better Tailwind CSS classes. Here we will cover four major ways on how we can write better Tailwind styles with Tailwind CSS. With this approach, you will not just only write better styles, but also create reusable abstraction, avoiding code duplication inside your code base, making our code base more maintainable and easier to use across teams. We'll make a reference to this official documentation on the best practices and implement it inside of our demo code base. In the channel, we learn and discuss the new skills around the topics of design and development. If you want to grow your skills and learn new things that are coming up, please subscribe for more videos just like this. Don't forget to smash the like button for me, this really helps me to create more content. Let's get started. So we have already created a bare bone uh, project with Vite and React, which is spinning uh, right now at port 5173. So before we begin, we want to go through uh, the official documentation on the best practices and how they recommend to use um, styles inside of our Tailwind project so that we can reuse style, manage duplication and create reusable abstraction using Tailwind CSS. First of all, uh, you know that Tailwind encourages utility first workflow, which means that we have a lot of utility classes and as the project grows, we may have a lot of these classes which may be over cluttered inside of our code base. So how can we uh, deal with this particular situation? So there are a couple of ways which uh, we will be discussing about four different ways. The first one is using editor and language features. For example, we have uh, we can see this particular feature which is multi cursor editing, which means that uh, inside of our VS Code or any code editor you use, we may have a multi cursor editing feature. So uh, this will help us to um, you know. Uh, make a change in one place and to reflect the change in multi lines. Let's take a look at this particular feature into action. So uh, what I'm going to do is for simplicity, let's go ahead and copy this uh, so that we can demonstrate a multi cursor editing feature. So um, I'll go to the code base and we have nothing here and just a bare bone with react app. And uh, inside here, what we want to do is let's create a component folder. And inside of our components, uh, we will create a file and call it avatar.tsx. So inside of our avatar, let's create a function and call it avatar. And we will return some JSX from here. So uh, this would be a section. And inside this particular section, we will have a couple of HTML tags and uh, we will uh, export this particular function. Let's go ahead and paste what we have just copied over there. And this would be just a list of avatars that we will be pasting in. So let's go ahead and save it. And after saving it, let's go ahead to our main app.jsx file and let's import avatar from avatar. And we won't be uh, using any of these right now. So let's import avatar from components and that would be avatar and we don't need this piece of state and let's go ahead and use this particular avatar inside of our app all right so after uh, we hit save we uh, need to check the browser and we can see we have a couple of um, avatars here but there are no um, you know styles that's taking into effect so uh, let's go ahead and check why Looks like um, everything is working fine. Uh, it was not working because it didn't, did not generate it post CSS config.js, but um, it generated it um, with the command and pick tailwind in it, and I added dash p again. So uh, we, we can see we have something like this. 
now uh, following with the documentation now what it says is using editor language feature which is multi cursor editing as you can see we can uh, edit with multiple cursors let's try this inside of our avatar so inside of our avatar what we can do is we can probably fiddle around uh, something with the class names let's go ahead and edit uh, these heights and width of these avatars so what we can do is we can use command D or control D in Windows and select it once and it select two options I mean two class names with the same class name and if I uh, again uh, key press uh, uh, command um, D or control D then it selects another one so I, I can see that I have selected three different you know um, you know height and width so uh, what I can do is I can just go ahead and make it 8 and also width and we can make it 8 let's go ahead and save it and let's see that in action and we can see we our um, avatars width and height was uh, you know uh, manipulated so uh, we can also do the same with uh, focus ring and let's go ahead and uh, hit uh, ctrl B or command D and uh, we can write ring which is red and 50 let's go ahead and save this and we can see that we have the change which is we do have this ring uh, red of 50 which is ring red of 50 which is taking into effect so uh, this is how we can um, you know uh, multi cursor things and make the change of uh, these class names in a single uh, you know changes so uh, this is one of the tip and let's go to another tip that we have in the official docs so another tip that would be uh, in the official docs is making the use of loops so um, for example we have a case here where we can see uh, it's using um, some uh, handlebars kind of syntax here uh, which says uh, we are looping over each of the contributors um, or just an avatar and let's go ahead and implement this inside of our project right now so um, what it says is we can extract a component and create a custom class for something and we can um, make the use of these avatars and avoid duplication and uh, re rendering it in a loop, loop inside of our real, real projects so we can also use map which is a higher order array function and we can see uh, the example right in here uh, which is a little bit of JSX snippet they have added so let's go ahead and implement this inside of our project which is inside of this avatar list so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, create another file which is um, let's call this avatars Bueller avatars.jsx and inside of our avatars.jsx what I want to do is I want to create a function uh, and call it avatars and it's avatar here uh, so it's just a Bueller and create a function which takes in um, array uh, containing a couple of um, uh, like key value pair object so uh, we'll define a constant and call it avatar list and this avatar list will have an object with a key value pair of image and alt so uh, and we will map this avatar list taking one specific avatar which is uh, which contains image uh, which is a string and alt which is a string and print out this particular image let's go ahead and save it and let's also rename this avatars and I recommend not to use this kind of um, naming convention in your production apps but this is just for demonstration purposes so if we go ahead and save this and take a look at the browser what we can see here is it's so uh, what we have done is we have created a single class name for example we can now uh, make the use of multi cursor and uh, just change one single class name rather than the multi class name and we can see that particular changes right in there so uh, this is one of the, uh, the ways how we can make the use of uh, tailwind classes and make it reusable so that we can make the use of this particular avatar avatars in multiple places and we still can achieve it with um, just one single line of change 
So a rounded uh, maybe MD and take a look at this we have this so uh, with this one simple change we are able to abstract away to a different component and loop um, the key value pairs and do the tailwind css optimization this is also a great technique so now let's go ahead and take a look at another tip which is extracting components and partials so uh, if we need to um, reuse some styles across multiple files the best strategy is to create a component like like you are using in your front-end frameworks like react vault or view and um, also like user templating language like this so let's go ahead and extract uh, a different component and call it probably uh, we will use this particular notification so let's use this uh, part uh, particular notification so um, uh, the bad uh, thing is don't re rely on CSS class to extract complex components so uh, as you can see we have a lot of class names going on so this is a bad practice so let's go ahead and do the good practice right so let's uh, first go into our app and let's remove everything that we have we don't need any imports for now and uh, let's go ahead and create a component and that would be notification .jsx. and inside of our notification .jsx, we will just uh, create a component so that would be just a component call it notification and this particular component takes in a couple of props and which is destructured and currently what we are uh, destructuring uh, from the prop is image url image alt title and message which is the same component that we can see here which is this particular component so uh, we kind of copied this but let's go ahead and implement this in action so we have created a component now let's go ahead and use this particular component which is a notification component and it's just complaining about you can use any like prop validation um, libraries like prop types or um, strongly type your props but uh, it's fine for now let's go ahead inside of our app.jsx and inside here what we want to do is we want to make the use of notification that we created so let's go ahead and rename this as a notification and also we will um, use the particular notification inside of our app right here so uh, let's remove these lines and let's add this and also we don't have any data provided uh, to our components so let's go ahead and uh, define a constant and call it data and that particular data will be passed as a prop to this particular notification component let's go ahead and save it uh, the props are image url image alt title and messages as per the documentation so we we created a component a template parcel like component inside of our a JavaScript um, application which should be not a really a partial but a component and we uh, abstract it away uh, into a single component and have a single source of truth for the styles so this is what we achieved at the end so this is also great a uh, way of doing things so uh, if you take a look at this particular example we can see we have this particular component and we have the reusable styles uh, so that we can um, you know uh, make the change in one single piece and we can also uh, you know um, create multiple components of this as well so this is also one of the great ways on how we can deal with um, abstraction inside of our tailwind classes so uh, let's take one last example as per the documentation we can see extracting classes with add rate apply so uh, if we are uh, not aware of this particular directive which is add rate apply directive uh, this particular directive will help us to extract away the css tailwind classes uh, to a css dedicated file for example uh, if we take a look at this particular example which is just a button and this particular button uses a lot of uh, styles like py and pi uh, these are a lot of uh, styles so um, and 
writing this much of styles inside of our button is a little bit of overkill. So that's why um, this apply directives kicks in. Um, let's go ahead and implement this particular apply directive inside of the button that we added for the notification before. So uh, we didn't really had a button there, but let's go ahead and use a button. So for that example, what I want to do is I want to uh, go back uh, to the avatars and we have the avatars here let's go back and inside of our um, avatars uh, let's go ahead and use this particular uh, image component as uh, apply directive so uh, we will remove everything that we have here let's go ahead and remove this and let's go to our index.css and inside here let's make the use of apply directive uh, for that particular image styles so uh, we will just add add rate layer and components and we do have a components imported here so uh, we will define a class name which is avatar circles and apply a couple of tailwind classes to this so let's go ahead and save it and use this apply uh, circles inside of our avatars component which is this one and uh, we have already added it there and if you go ahead and save it and see that in action we do have everything in place but what we have done is abstracted away the tailwind css classes to a dedicated um, one single class name so this is one of the tailwind optimization that we can deal with when dealing with a lot of uh, class names inside of our apps uh, with this pretty much handy um, directive address apply so um, uh, in this example we have this particular button which is abstracted away uh, with this particular single class name and that's uh, using the same class names that we have for uh, this particular button used here with the apply directive so uh, one last tip is avoid premature abstraction so uh, we need to know about when not to use address apply uh, directive and when we can start using address apply directive for everything um, and just don't end up writing css again so uh, you, we need to think about uh, you know you have we have uh, all the class names at all the time and uh, we have jump between the multiple files to make changes changing uh, styles is scarier and uh, our CSS bundle will be bigger if we are going to use upgrade apply so it's a cautious directive that we need to take into consideration about so we discuss about these four tips on how we can um, make the use of these handy tips to um, you know um, optimize our class names um, uh, with Tailwind CSS and uh, which helps us to write uh, clean, scalable and maintainable styles with Tailwind. I hope you learned something new from this. If you want to learn more around the topics of design and development, please subscribe for more videos just like this. Don't forget to smash the like button for me. This really helps me to create more content. Thanks a lot guys. See you in the next one.